Welcome to the K-Pop Cast. I'm your host, Stephanie, and we have an almost full house here today. First, I'm joined by our resident K-Pop B-Boy, Supermatic. Hello, hello, what's up? And welcoming back our East Coast co-producer and ARMY, Ariana. Hey, hey, hey. Finally, last but not least, we are joined by BTS Behind the Scenes member, Ramen. <laughs> Hi, guys. Happy to be here. And today we are talking about none other than BTS's comeback, Fake Love. Comeback stage. <laughs> Letting you know if these songs are Daebak or not. But before we dive into that, first, our hit replays. Replay, replay, replay. This week, we're doing a special edition of Hit Replays where each of us lists our favorite track off the Love Yourself tier album. Because, let's face it, that's all we're listening to anyway since it dropped. <laughs> Matt, what's making you Hit Replay? Yeah, for me, I had a hard time because I wish I could say this whole album was my Hit Replay. But Absolutely. <laughs> if I had to pick yep. one, I'm probably going to have to go with Truth Untold. For me, it became my Hit Replay simply because first, the lyrics, which if you look them up, they made me tear up, man. <laughs> That got to me. Aww. And then you accompany that with the unbelievable instrumental from none other than Uncle Steve! Steve Aoki! Hey! Uncle Steve! <laughs> I can't believe this was him. It's really refreshing and such a different sound as opposed to the usual signature Aoki banger clanger aggressive track, you know? So that's why like, I just I had to go with the truth untold. <laughs> you ramen what is your hit replay off this album for me it was on Paman. this song sounds like something i will definitely hear in the states mm-hmm. a lot of superhero references from superman to batman and the one and only on Paman, which is actually a popular anime for young children about the adventures of a superhero named Anpanman, which has a bean jam filled pastry head, which is known as Anpan. <laughs> and it's actually pretty interesting. He fights to protect the world from an evil germ, and it's a great reminder of being strong, which BTS is known for. What's making you hit replay? I was in the same boat as Matt, obviously, but (laughs) I have to go with my gut and pick my first love, Magic Shop. This song has a very synth pop western feel. I really do think it'd be the best second single if they decide to release one. I also think it's just a good use of everyone's strengths, especially in the emotionality of the vocals. And last but not least, I have to say I am a complete sucker for a fan song anytime. Nice. What about you, Steph? Honestly, all of us on the K-pop cast, we're having a tough time because we love the whole album and we were like fighting over <laughs> which song, which of our favorite tunes would make it into Who get there first. Play. And like one of, one of the last ones that was left for me, but I'm proud to have it as my top is 134340. I don't know what the title is supposed to mean. I'm it sure is, someone... It's the location of Pluto. Well, there you go. I knew one of my co-hosts would, would help me out here. <laughs> I really like this song because it has a light, funky, jazzy sound that's so refreshing to hear from BTS. I think a lot of us use refreshing as a word to describe this whole album. The songs are so fun, so fresh. I could actually see someone like Crush or Zion T getting on a track like this, and I love those two, so I am a happy camper. Moving on 
to our Daybok or not for BTS's fake love. about the concept. Ooh, I'm a big fan of this concept. The visuals are at once dark and gritty and surreal, but also really vibrant and colorful. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I've seen a K-pop video that has this exact color scheme or look to it, and I thought I'd seen it all, honestly. <laughs> the muted color palette with these pops of color for emphasis, it harks back to the, the Wings era. Yeah. I think. yeah. For me, I said this like, when I was watching it to my boyfriend. I said it's like the upside down of DNA. Oh my God. Because <laughs> like, I, I was just like, they walked through the upside down world, but it looks like DNA in its setting, but all the colors are muted and everything's slightly different, which I find really interesting, especially in those dance sections that are in that really big room. Mm -hmm. But, and it's also like unbeknownst to us that DNA was actually part of the whole storyline, which we didn't actually know until we saw this video. <laughs> interesting. Speaking of rooms, the boys are locked into rooms that each have a different item from a past era. For example, we have V being in a room with walls full of cell phones. Jimin is in a dilapidated dance studio with a sink. We have Jungkook on the outside of each room without even being noticed by the others. We can all say that the boys are looking at the object that they have in a room or exploring the room in itself that they're in. And then when you get to the end of it, right when you think the MV is over, they literally blow us away. I mean, yeah. all, almost all of the rooms self-destruct in one way or another. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was one of my favorite parts of the video. They really took me by surprise there and just took the whole bar for K-pop music videos and shot it through the roof. Pretty much. <laughs> Did you guys know that no CG was used? What? That's crazy. <laughs> the fire that came out in Suga's room and the water that flowed through Jimin's room, all of that was real. That's, That's crazy. crazy. Yeah. Most importantly, most importantly, all of those Snickers were real. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be in that room. <laughs> right. yeah. I think all of us would pick that room. Probably get cavities. That's fine. Yeah. You're in a room. Yeah. Who cares if anybody sees your teeth? Yeah. yeah. It's fine. No worries. And as if that wasn't enough, though, of a bar raiser, I mean, I just want to quickly shout out an interview that RM had a quote from where he said that with the Fake Love album, they wanted to say that if you're untrue to yourself, love won't last. And that love can either be between a person and a person or it can be between me and myself. And I think that's really reflective of what they're going for with this whole album here, which I love. Yeah, tying back into this idea that it could be between a person and person or between you and yourself, I think that that goes, kind of goes into the theory of what this video is about quite a bit. I do want to do a big disclaimer here that we are obviously not going to get too far into the deeply embedded theories because we could talk about this for days mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. everything attaches to everything. And now that we know <laughs> DNA is a part of this, I don't even know what to think. Mm -hmm. But I want to say that we got this really interesting promo ahead of the video mm -hmm. where there's a quote that basically says that the magic shop is a place where you go to take bad memories and turn them in for good memories. Mm -hmm. And so we see this video of all the boys, except for Jungkook who comes in the end, all the boys are coming into the room with an item that they had attached to a sad memory as seen most likely in the Wings era. And then they, they trade it in for a happy one as seen in the highlight reels. Ooh. So you see like J-Hope turn in the Snickers bar for the cake the girl gives him in the highlight reel. Mm. This appears apparently to only be like short term moments of happiness because they didn't actually deal with the thing that made them sad. Mm. Yeah. So they might be coming in here and dropping things off, but they're not fully taking care of themselves and, and getting over the thing that makes them feel sad about that item. So that kind of ties back to the feelings that they felt in DNA 
they now see as fake love. Mm -hmm. So then in the rooms particularly, I just want to point out that like each boy's own fear is being represented, like fears that we've seen in the other videos. So Jin actually has his room blow up really early in the video. Mm. And it's because his fear is to lose control, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So he has been using these flowers to time travel and he can't protect the one that's left in his room, which is the one he got in the Love Yourself Her era from one of the girls that he was dating, I guess. Wow. J-Hope's fear is being abandoned by his mother who left him the Snickers bar. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I know. She left him as a little boy with the Snickers bar so that his room fills with the Snickers bar because he's not allowed to get over that. And then with RM, it's his fear is surviving without knowing who he is. Mm. And so he's always left in front of a mirror. That's right. Yeah. He always has to deal with his own reflection. Yeah. But he has and fabulous hair. So is it? Oh my God. <laughs> he can keep looking at himself and I will keep looking at him. <laughs> yep. Well, and you see, it's really interesting because he looks in the mirror and what's reflected back at him is not the image that he sees. What? Yeah, it, it isn't. Yeah, it's a completely right. different outfit and com completely different hair when he looks in the mirror. Oh, dang, it I got to watch it again. Yeah, it's really interesting. He's wearing like a yellow jacket in that piece. And then on the outside, you mentioned we have Jungkook who's just kind of going from room to room looking in but not being able to go in. And mm -hmm. it's because he's like almost like looking in on their suffering. And mm -hmm. I've seen kind of two theories going around is either that it could be tied to Spring Day, Ooh. which is in the Omelia's, uh, there's the, the young boy who was left behind to take on everybody's pain. And that could be Jungkook. Or Wing's era, Jungkook's fear is actually tied to his older brother, or Hyung's, as we call it, his Hyung's pain. Mm. So all of the fear that he has is tied to if they're upset. Oh. So many hidden messages. <laughs> Jungkook, don't be sad. Be more selfish. Just care about yourself. Don't worry about I thought I thought it was a really interesting take on this like really really and deeply embedded theory that we've been kind of traveling along with but it was kind of done in a way that i think if you're not an avid bts follower you're still going to understand that this is a cool video that looks interesting mm -hmm. and something's going on mm -hmm. right right yeah for but sure. that's the stuff that we know is going on because we've been following them for a long time mm -hmm. exactly <laughs> yes yeah, so moving on to the choreo i mean thanks for first of all round of applause for ariana and then <laughs> like the theory <laughs> analysis yeah. is going deep so thorough <laughs> no I <laughs> nice job. Gotta get that um, PhD. <laughs> K-pop. Seriously. Yep. You have honorary degrees all over the place. K-pop university. Yes. Yep. So I feel like the message definitely carries through to the choreo. Ooh, it's just yes. an extension of the visuals and of the concept. So it really moves smoothly through there. One move or image that stood out to me was the blooming flower as the closing pose. Mm -hmm. There's also a line in the lyrics that says, I grew a flower that can't be bloomed in a dream that can't come true. I thought that was so poetic mm -hmm. and it matches with the choreo as well. Mm -hmm. We keep talking about these flowers because it ties back to the imagery from those past comebacks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So someone is really thinking mm -hmm. deeply about planting the same imagery throughout all the aspects mm -hmm. of the music video. It's so deep. Yeah. I, I know there's a lot of symbolism throughout the story. What, what else is there in like seen in the choreo? Uh, for me, one thing I immediately took a notice of was how they seem to be playing off this old adage or saying of hear no evil, speak no evil, see no evil. This is most noticeable for me at least in the backdrop of the hands and during the chorus because there's that section of the chorus where all seven of them are moving forward and each of them is representing a different part of that whole idea of not acknowledging evil. I mean some of them have their hands over their eyes, some of them are covering their ears and then others are doing a single hand over the mouth and it's like as much as we try to move forward we have this evil in front of us but we're trying not to acknowledge it. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was really cool especially being a dancer here all about the imagery and conveying your emotions without saying anything like you gotta let your movement speak for you and i thought these guys did a really good job especially during the chorus there well and i i thought it reminded me a lot of dna in some pieces but where dna was like an emphasis on connection and being attached yep. together fake love was more about like tearing and and yep. ripping apart and breaking mm. up the connection which i found really interesting like a lot of like ripping at the <laughs> shirts and <laughs> yeah pulling apart from each other right. which i found really interesting yeah and each time the dance carries any kind of head holding or mirroring or mouth covering ear covering it's instantly broken upon which reminds us listeners about the need to find yourself or rather yeah. love yourself that bts greatly reminds us to do in this whole dilemma of fake love Let's talk about Jungkook's abs. Yes. <laughs> Someone else has to talk about this because 
As Jess from the Jess Life says, we don't look at him. <laughs> what up, though? Hey. Uh, if I may, though, I will say that I actually found out, thanks to many gratuitous fan cams on YouTube, that Jungkook yep. had not one, but two ad flashes during the what? Billboard Music Wars. Yep. Only one made it yep. through the broadcast. I love it. How did I miss this? If you go on mine on YouTube, find all the fan cams, you'll see both, because they're both during the chorus. <laughs> Logging on right now. Send me the link, please. Uh, he's just <laughs> way too young for me. <laughs> It's all right. Uh, but he looks great. I love it. He does. You go, Jungkook. Yeah. So let's talk about the audio itself. Yeah, so the more I listen to this song, the more I like it. Mm-hmm. And the more I unpack the layers of the instrumentation. So there's electric guitar, there's bass, kick drums that come in one by one, like layering onto each other, adding more drama throughout the song. And the main chord progression is this dark, ominous, minor chord. And like, I've been racking my brain all day for what trap hip hop song that chord progression reminds me of. And right before recording this episode, it hit me. The chord is from August Alsina's song called Numb. You guys should look it up. The lyrics are pretty funny. It's pretty good to dance to. Hey. But I was like, why? Why does this sound a little like trap like to me it's not just j-hope's rap it's the chord and how dark it is so i'm loving it you guys. this whip is mine but i drive it like i stole it flying down the interstate lighting up a hustle gang on the mic As we know, the song is definitely driven by strong feeling and emotion, Mm, and Mm -hmm. we definitely feel that through the voices. Right from the beginning, we hear V's deep voice, Mm. and Mm -hmm. it kind of just enthralls Mm -hmm. us into it. It's just, give me more. And then we have (laughs) the raps, uh, Mm -hmm. easily seeped in with Rapmon. It's more of an answer and call kind of manner. And then it's accompanied by J-Hope's strong rap flow that he's known for. Yeah, J-Hope like experiments a little with the Migos flow. Yeah. Right. Right, right. Da 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 yeah, it's so fun. You can tell that he's a fan of whatever's going on in the yeah. U.S. hip hop scene. Oh, he's absolutely. had so much fun with it, experimenting. Well, and I think that you were talking about the like emotionality of the song and the mm-hmm. voices, and you can kind of see that with the harmonies that they decided to use. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought this was actually really interesting how they paired people this time around because we normally get this like very formulaic, and it depends on the song, but normally it's like Jungkook and Jimin, V and Jim. You know, that's normally been the pair for a long time and then they might switch it up for another song but very particularly they paired Jin and Jungkook together mm. but this time Jin took the high notes and Jungkook took the low notes and I thought that was a really interesting choice and I think overall on this album they're really leaning on Jin's high notes which is I'm so happy because he deserves it <laughs> but it's he's got this really strong emotional sound and I think that that was chosen specifically mm-hmm. for this song. And I want to point out, other other than the really beautiful uh, flower metaphor in the lyrics, my other favorite lyrics were the part, um, it switches off who says it, I think it's normally uh, V, but he says, love is so mad, love it so mad, try to erase myself and make me your doll. Mm, I remember that. And I thought about like how that is reflective of a relationship where you were so caught up that you lose yourself. You know, mm-hmm. so it was. I just thought I thought it was a really beautiful concept. For sure, for sure. Yeah, I do want to say like uh, one other thing I noticed. I'm not sure if anybody else caught this, but if you listen to Fake Love like very closely for the background of it, you can almost yep. hear where they deliberately left spaces for the fan chants where they're supposed mm-hmm. to be. Yes. And I mean, mm-hmm. on that note, quick shout out to all those Army at the Billboard Music Awards again. Yeah. Because you could hear them on broadcast, and that made me proud. Well, and it's good because we had like a lot of complaints coming from the AMAs that they like, dr- in order to cut out the fan chants, they drowned out the guys. So it sounded like they were lip syncing when they were actually singing live. And so this one, you oh, could wow. actually hear them because of it. So it was mm. awesome. It, I thought this was better, even though I wanted to see more of Ooh. them. Yeah. Particularly the second ab shot, even ah! though I don't look at him. <laughs> Always happy to see more. <laughs> so 
Shall we move on to scores? <sighs> yeah, I think uh, we're ready. Yeah. yeah. For the concept, one being lowest, five being highest, how would you rate it? Concept-wise, you know that this was really solid, strong effort, and I got to give my boys that 4.5. Wow. I, I love it. <laughs> how about you, Ramen? What was your score? I think for me, I would say the same too. 4.5. Uh, definitely feel that fear aspect of fake love. Mm. And how about you, Ariana? I'm going to only give it a slight demotion. Ooh. Mm. And I only give it a 4.4. Four. Oh. <laughs> and it's that point one difference. We're pulling our leg here. Sorry, I was gonna give it a 4.25, and then I was like, no, because you know, Jungkook did show his abs. <laughs> but 4.4, 4, I would say the only thing that was brought up that I think could be a problem is for newer fans. Mm. But I think it was a very beautiful video, mm -hmm. and I, I this not having CG and like thinking about all the behind the scenes of action we're gonna see on this, I'm really excited about it. Same, I would I would echo that. It was beautiful, it was fresh. We had never seen that color palette before. The cinematic production value really blew me away. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, I think I'm with you, Ariana, at 4.4. Very well done. Look at us being ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> what about the audio, Matt? Oh, well, you know, audio, I actually am going to give these guys another 4.5 as well. Wow. It, it was a little lower for me at first, but the more I listened to it in preparation for this episode, the more it just grew on mm. me, and especially okay. after like Steph did, just unpacking layer by layer each part of the song, like yes. taking the video away. I appreciate this song so much more after I listen to it more, so yeah, 4.5. For me, I would not say that this is my particular type of song, but again, it grew on me as I listened to it. Mm. And it does kind of take me a little bit back to like the I Need You mm. days. Mm -hmm. So I would give it a 4.25. All right, I've listened to this album a few times now, and which songs have I listened to the most? Fake Love is right up there at the top. Yeah, I've nice. gone back to listen to it. I think about it when I'm at work. Mm -hmm. And Same. it's got staying power for me. So I th I'm going to copy Ariana again with 4.25. I think I might actually have the lowest for me. It's four. <gasps> I know. What? Four. Yes. What? How can it be lower? I mean, I still love this song. It's definitely a song that I actually generally really like mm -hmm. and have it on repeat throughout mm -hmm. my day yeah. at work. I made this comment before, but I do feel like sometimes when we score, mm. specifically, we'll talk about like audio in this case. We we kind of have to think about who the artist is, and I think a lot mm -hmm. of times with BTS, I'm gonna be like, well, it's a 4.25 because Spring Day is a five. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right, right. And it's it's almost like you have to judge them around who they are, which I find really interesting because I think I score DNA lower than this, but mm -hmm. I still love that song. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I yeah. mean, obviously, like, there's a bias because they're one of my favorite bands of all time, but like, <laughs> I think we do have to like sometimes separate them. And not just them, but like other, some of the other bands that have like kind of stepped their game. We have to separate them a little bit. Right. Yeah, I, I think yeah. I think that's that's what we try to do on the K-pop cast here <laughs> <laughs> is yeah. really take as much context into account mm -hmm. as possible. If we're listening to the debut single of some new young baby mm -hmm. band, then <laughs> we give them some slack, yeah. you know, for a debut. Um, but for someone like BTS, we hold them to this really high standard and we just love them. And that's part of the context too. And they keep knocking it out of the park. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So all in all was BTS's fake love. Daybuck or not. Uh, I'm gonna go with Daybuck. Daybuck? Yep, Daybuck. Matt? I, yep. I don't know. I'm not so sure. Yeah, Daybuck. Get out. <laughs> Get fired. <laughs> Definitely Daybuck, for sure. All right, so that's it for this week's review. Moving on to listener feedback. As always, guys, be sure to join us for our weekly K-pop Twitter chats every Tuesday at the K-pop chat hashtag, which is led by none other than yours truly, me, mm -hmm. Supermatic. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> and for this chat, we discussed fake love and if it's a good representation of BTS to newer fans, particularly in the U.S. active BBMAs. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we had two tweets that we'd like to give a shout out to. The first being from at Sashimi Halmoni. Um, <laughs> I think it's Sam Shin. I, I'm sorry, I apologize. Sam, <laughs> from Sam Shin Halmoni saying, Honestly, we'll find out. My personal taste is never a good barometer of what the majority will like, so I don't know. Lots of folks poo pooed DNA. <laughs> 
and look which track turned out to be the monster. Mm. It's also interesting to see that the second most popular track in all the charts in The Truth Untold, I think it's enormously appealing. Hey. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually surprised it's a ballad, but it's the second most popular song on the album. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. People are probably developing more of an appreciation for that ballady emotional taste. <laughs> oh God, and their voices are so good. <laughs> yeah. But while on that note, I do want to shout out our other tweet that we really liked. I know I appreciate this comment very well. It comes from Nick at Beach Jeans, and he said that they're evolving as a group in such a way that it's hard to hold up fake love as a perfect musical representation of BTS, especially considering some of their earlier stuff. But I think it's a genuine, heartfelt, catchy song, and you don't get much more BTS than that. The essence of BTS. The essence. Right? There should be a perfume. We had a really good response for this one. I mean, are we surprised? <laughs> are we surprised? We have, yeah, we've had some good weeks here, but I think it's a testament also to show that so many people that aren't even necessarily ARMY came out to talk about how proud they were of them at the BBMAs and how they're enjoying this song. So I think that's a great thing. I guess it's that time, guys, for us to sign off. All right, listeners, don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, and tell your friends about the K-pop cast. Let everyone know where we can find you on social media and give us your answer to the question of what you think the next installment of the Love Yourself series will be. Ariana, you're the theory master here. Where are we going next? You can reach me on Twitter at Ariana underscore Y underscore Khan, as in Genghis Khan. I think that this next one is going to be about actually loving your, like getting to the point where you love yourself. And so I think it would be like love yourself rejuvenation. Mm. I like it. I like it. You can follow me, Ramen, at Double Ramen on Instagram and Facebook. For me, I think the name of the Love Yourself third installment would probably be him. Oh. How about you, Matt? Yeah, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram, as always, at Supermatic. That is S-O-U-P-E-R-M-A-T-I-C. And this whole idea of love yourself is ultimately in the end, you know, you love yourself. So I feel mm -hmm. like the third song will probably be something along the lines of love yourself, you. Oh! oh. oh. That's so cute. Well, last but not least, how about you, Steph? I do hope that the story arc comes back up into the positive area. So something like heart or smile would really bring things full circle. I, I want the boys to actually love themselves eventually. It's, yeah. Right? I think that's what we all want. <laughs> yes. And you can find me online at S Parker 2 on Twitter. And don't forget to tell us your answer to the question by tweeting us at the K pop cast. Have a good night. See you next time. A shout out for the hairstylist. Ooh. Right, right. Absolutely. Their hair was on point. Their hair was amazing. Did you see how um, Kelly Clarkson, who introduced them, Put had on, on the these ear? huge, ridiculous earmuffs? <laughs> yeah. yeah, she did. For yeah. the band chant. She was like, uh, yeah. I'm prepared, yeah. you guys. <laughs> a lot of fans were saying that Kelly Clarkson looked like a um, light stick of black and pink. <laughs> <laughs> K pop symbols are everywhere you look. For real. Right? For real. You never know. <laughs> if you're looking for them. <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh,